So there's this um, there's this type of food in China that they call like jia chang cai, which means like like homemade food. It's like the type of food that you would make at home for just a regular Chinese family, and it's really good and it's not expensive, and it's really confusing because sometimes there will be really expensive food that's not good, and I'm like, how is this possibly the case? It's like you know you can get kung pao chicken, which is God's gift to people up after midnight, <laughs> for sixteen kwai. And it's just like good. Like, why, why mess with it even more? But a lot of people are like, you know, China is getting a lot more money, and I feel like sometimes people want to distinguish themselves from the ma and pa restaurants. One of the things, like when I first moved here, I found this restaurant that was like literally right down the street from my house. I was like, oh, this place is perfect. I love this place. This is going to be my place. And then I went there, and I got dysentery, <laughs>、um, <laughs> which was not fun. But did make me feel like I was on the Oregon Trail.、Um, <laughs> also, weird thing about、uh, stomach problems here. Totally normal topic of conversation in China. <laughs> Who would have thought? I didn't know this. I came to China, and the first day I came to China, I had a stomach problem. Second day, I show up to class, and teacher's like, "Oh, like you, you don't look so good."、And、I'm like, "Yeah," and she's like, "Ah,、oh, you got the shits." <laughs> I'm like. That is exactly what I have. <laughs> I have the shits. <laughs> But I've told this whole conversation in the context of eating at a cheap restaurant. This exact same stuff happened at a fancy restaurant. I, you can go to super fancy restaurants. You'll eat it. You'll still get sick because there are some people who are using bad stuff, and there are some people who are not. And there's actually no correlation between how much money you pay for the food and whether you're likely to get sick from the food. And I think that there's a real shame because jia chang cai, like regular jia chang cai, it's really good. All that we're missing is a marketing campaign. Gambian dojiao, southern fire enmeshed in vegetable flesh. Verdant shoots puckered like the oily lips of a mottled lover. Pot upon pot, a wash in a sea of fiery red Sichuanese lipstick, beckoning the eater to lust, to life. Jia Chang Tofu, geometric perfection intended for gastronomical inspection. Sapia pillows tease and give way to tender dentine pressure. On each piece can be seen the clean sheen of bean and protein. Oh yeah! Gong Bao Ji Ding, royal cubes of sinuous meat enrobed in effervescent crimson finery and allied with leguminous compatriots, tanginess that ties taste buds to tails of temples and tongues. Even better when sloppy drunk. Oh yeah. The Sanxian, a menage a trois of flavor, starchy tubers, crisp peppers, and rotund eggplant intertwine in an orgy of delectable delicacy, passion, and potatoes. Oh yeah. Gai Fan, a lipid Parthenon crowns the peak of snow white Olympus, grain upon grain piled high into the culinary heights of myth. And legend, a glimpse into the greatness of the gastronomy gods, a shining alabaster tower amongst the meals of mere mortals. Oh yeah, Xi Hong Shi Chao Ji Da, a field of rubies awash in rivers of congealed gold, crystalline sucro shimmers in a tiara of diamond atop succulent mounds of chartreuse goodness. Generous caches of MSG lie hidden, the motherload of flavor. Oh yeah. By you, the scourge of the unworthy. Liquid flame decimates gut bacteria in a cleansing rampage. Best served in an absurdly large bowl or as a Molotov cocktail. Hey everybody! This is Jesse. I'm the creator of the Great Law of China. I hope you guys like the show. If you like this episode, we have other episodes that are like this one, but with different things. It's crazy. It's on my page. It's on the Asia Society's page. It's all a lot of fun. Follow us. I'm sure you won't regret it.